What's going on everybody? This is Ultima High Device Vids and today in this video we're going to be checking out 50 free tweaks for iOS 12.4. And just to let you guys know, all the tweak names and sources can be found in the description down below. Alright, and without any further ado, let's go ahead and jump right in. New Grid Switcher formats your app switcher in a grid view that works just like this. Roman passcode replaces the numbers on your passcode buttons on the lock screen with Roman numerals. Tap Video Config allows you to change your camera configuration just by tapping on the resolution in the upper right hand corner and you were presented with the options, you select the option and it changes right on the fly without ever having to open up the settings application. Home Gesture Lite adds the iPhone 10 and above gestures to older devices like the iPhone 8 and below. So you could go ahead and close the application just by sliding it for the bottom of the screen. You could drag up and hold to get into the app switcher and you can also switch between your recently used applications just by dragging it from the bottom just like that. Same thing goes when you're on the home screen to get into the last used app. And of course, this also applies to unlocking your device. You can go ahead and drag up to do so. And also the control center has been moved to the top right of the screen just like this, as you'd expect. And you may notice on my home screen here, I have a very clean look. And this is achieved by a few different tweaks. You can see the dock is completely transparent, and that's through clear dock. You can also notice how my icon labels only show up when I go ahead and swipe from page to page just like this and then they disappear. That's shy labels. You also notice the same thing applies to the page dots down at the bottom and that's shy page dots. Normally in iOS, you're only able to customize the bottom area of the control center. You're not normally able to rearrange and remove elements from the top. For instance, the connectivity module and the music module and a few different others. However, with CC support, as you can see, it adds those options right to the settings for the, for the control center. So you could go ahead and rearrange them at your leisure just like this and remove them if you want to as well, as you can see and add them back just like any other control center module. Now, CC support is a standalone tweak for that function, but it also serves as a platform for tweak developers to create their own control center modules. And I have a few of those installed right now. Here's power module that allows you to get a few different options that pertain to power, such as respring, power off, lock your device, etc., right in the control center. And here's another one called CC modules that allows you to add a plethora of different third-party app shortcuts and utility shortcuts to your control center. So you can get a lot more function at a control center with these tweaks. And once again, you could add all of them through the control center settings. Boulders provides a very nice redesign to the folder interface. As you can see right here, it's this nice edge-to-edge -edge display. You're going you're to be able to fit more icons on each page, and it also tells you how many icons are in each folder with this nice new animation as well. Dragger brings full drag and drop support to the iPhone. So as you can see right here, I could go ahead and open up Safari, grab a link just like this, and put it in another application. For instance, the Notes application, as you can see, it works just like that. Normally, that's exclusive to iPads. Even though iOS 13 includes a less obtrusive volume HUD, for those of us on iOS 12, Video HUD provides just that, as you can see. Normally in iOS, when you use Siri, it takes over your entire screen, but with small Siri, as you can see, it'll show up in this sleek banner at the top, and of course, if you want to expand it, you can, just by swiping down like that. PM really will warn you before you set an alarm for PM in the clock app. As you can see right here, if I have an alarm set to PM, I click save, it's going to ask me, do you really mean to set this alarm for PM? Because of course, most of the time, people want to set their alarm for AM. If I wanted to, I click yes, I did, and if I don't want to, I click nope, and it automatically corrects me, and I can press save, and then it's AM. Exact time will tell you the exact time a notification arrived. As you can see right there, I just got a text message. And as you can see right there, it says 10.01 p.m. because that's the time right now. Normally in iOS, it would say now, and then it would say one minute ago, two minutes ago, etc. But this just tells you the exact time straight off the bat. Real CC allows you to fully and completely disable Wi-Fi and Bluetooth from the control center rather than just temporarily disabling them like it is normally in iOS. As you can see right now, they're both fully off. Color Me Badge adjusts the color of your app badges to the color of the app that the badge is on, as you can see right here. Stick Around allows you to pin any option from the main list view in the Settings app to the top of the Settings app. So to do that, you just go ahead and swipe to the left on any option, for instance, Display and Brightness. Then you go ahead and select Pin, and just like that, as you can see, it'll appear at the top for easy access like that. Now, if to unpin something, you just go ahead and swipe on it and select Unpin, and there you go, it's gone. Quick CC allows you to browse through Wi-Fi networks and Bluetooth devices and select them right from the control center, similar to iOS 13. You just tap and hold on the icons, as you can see like this, and it provides you with the list. And while we're in control center, here's Sugarcane, which will give you percentages for your brightness and volume sliders, as you can see, just like that. We also have Cool CC, which gives you this nice dark background for the control center and provides this nice outlined effect on the control center, which just goes for a clean look. 
HUD Customizer makes the iOS 12 and below volume HUD a whole lot more bearable through various different customization options. As you can see right here, I moved mine to the upper left hand side of the screen so it's less obtrusive. You could also customize color and a whole host of other things in the settings. Banner Copied allows you to easily copy the contents of a banner notification just by tapping and holding just like that, and it'll say text copied. You could also do this from the cover sheet. So as you can see right here, now I could go ahead and paste, and just like that, it works. And while we have the keyboard up, here's Blur, and as you can see, it provides your device with a nice dark keyboard no matter where it is. Normally, the dark keyboard only appears in some instances, but this makes it appear everywhere. CC Linker allows you to be taken to the settings for different items in the control center just by tapping and holding on the respective option, just like that. Color My Battery will change the color of your battery indicator in the status bar depending on the charge level of your device. If you go into the settings for Color My Battery, you'll have the ability to specify the custom colors for different percent levels. As you can see here, 0 to 10%, 11 to 20%, and so on. You can go ahead and set any color to appear when your battery is at any of these levels. Size Finder allows you to easily determine how much space an application is taking up just by putting your device into wiggle mode and you can see right there where the X normally appears to delete an application you'll see the amount of space applications are taking up. No functionality is lost, you can still go ahead and tap on the amount and it will allow you to delete the application as normal. Force in Picture brings picture in picture support to the iPhone so you can go ahead and watch a video on your device while doing anything else, going into any other applications, etc. If you go ahead and tap on the video you get the controls like this to go back to the app, pause the video or close it and of course you could go ahead and do those just like that. Five icon dock iOS 11 and 12 allows you to have five icons in the dock as the name suggests just like this. Cuttlefish will change the background tint color when you invoke quick actions on an app to the color of that app. As you can see for the messages app it's a green tint, for the app store app it's a blue tint, so on and so forth. Dark messages provides your messages application with a beautiful dark mode just like this. Looks great in the conversation view and in the list view. Floating Dock gives you the iPad style dock on the iPhone. So as you can see right here, in addition to our standard dock applications, we have our recently opened applications over here on the right, and you're also able to add more applications in the standard four to the dock as well. And of course the iPad dock has that kind of floating effect, hence the name. Primal Folder gives you a whole host of customization options in regards to folders in iOS. However, the headlining feature is the ability to have the first app in your folder show as the app icon. Of course, it's still a folder you tap on, it'll, it'll be taken to the folder. However, there's a feature where you could 3D touch and go to the first app just like that. And if you don't have 3D touch, you could double tap. Icon Renamer allows you to rename any app icon on your home screen. Just go ahead and put your device into wiggle mode and tap on any app icon and you'll get this pop-up. You can go ahead and type in any name and then just press apply and then just like that as you can see the change does take an effect. Fast forward time adds seconds to your lock screen clock and it allows you to customize the size and position of your day and time. As you can see right here I do have the seconds just like that on the clock which is nice to have and I customize the size of the day and time. Smooth Cursor provides this very nice smooth effect when you're typing with your cursor, and this is actually from Microsoft Office 2013, it's just kind of in that style, it just makes things look a little bit cleaner. Flat Safari URL removes the gray bar that appears in the address bar in Safari, as you can see here on the right, going for a very clean look. Hide NC Text removes the text that says Notification Center above Groups of Notifications. As you can see right here, on the right with this tweak installed, there's just nothing there, going for a cleaner look. Weather Unlock Text replaces the Press Home to Unlock or Swipe Up to Unlock text on your lock screen with the weather, as you can see right here. Mark Favorites makes it very easy to mark multiple items in the Photos application as your favorites. Just go ahead and select as many items as you want, and then you'll notice a new favorite button at the bottom. If you press that, all the photos selected will be favorited. Notif will always show your notification history on the lock screen. So normally in iOS, the notification history of course shows when you go ahead and swipe down from the top of the screen for your cover sheet here. But with this tweak, as you can see right here, when I lock my device, it's always going to stay here. Even if I you know, unlock it and then relock it, it will continuously stay here so long as whatever items are showing are in my cover sheet. So this could be handy if you find yourself forgetting about notifications. This will constantly remind you every time you wake up your device. Normally in iOS, when you're on the cover sheet and you swipe over to the widgets page, as you can see right here, again on the left, normally in iOS, the date and time will stay there. But with this tweak, I know the time. As you can see, it hides the date and time from the widgets page. Simple passcode buttons allows you to make the passcode buttons on the lock screen look a little bit cleaner. So in these settings, you have the ability to choose between hiding the letters and hiding everything inside the passcode buttons. I'm going to hide everything, and you will need to respring in order to apply the change. And as you can see right here, the buttons are completely empty, just going for a more minimal look. Magba allows you to individually customize the color of pretty much everything in the control center. You just go ahead and tap on any of the options and choose your color. This is what mine looks like right now. As you can see, it adds a nice splash of color to things. 
Oh My Flash allows you to set an automatic timeout for the flashlight in iOS. So in the settings for the tweak, you can set the timeout in minutes. So I have it set to one minute here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and turn the flashlight on. And you'll see here after one minute, the flashlight will automatically turn off. Now, of course, I edited this sequence for the sake of time, but as you can see right there, after the desired amount of time, the flashlight will automatically turn off. So this can prevent your phone from draining in battery if you forget to turn your flashlight off. Dismiss Anywhere makes it so pretty much everywhere in iOS where there's normally a cancel button, there's no longer a cancel button as you can see here on the right, and you're able to execute the cancel command just by tapping anywhere in the excess space rather than having to tap on the actual cancel button as you can see there normally in iOS on the left. Better five column home screen allows you to have five columns of apps on each home page as you can see right here. So this of course allows you to fit many more applications on each page. Round dock will round the corners of your dock as you can see right here. Same status bar fixes a small pet peeve that some people have with iOS. The status bar is a slightly smaller size when your device is unlocked versus when it's locked. But with same status bar, the status bar will remain the exact same size regardless of whether you're on the home screen or the lock screen. All right, guys, that pretty much wraps it up for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel for more content. All right, guys, talk to you in the next one. Peace out.